Hello everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls 2 Flick the Mage. It's been another couple of days since I've played and as I promised last time we're going to take on our first old one today although before I do that I'm very quickly going to go over where I've been putting my stats and the current state of my equipment because people have been asking for me to show that a bit more. I do most of my levelling off camera because I didn't, I, I didn't think you'd want me to be constantly running back to the Emerald Herald. Turns out you do actually want to know where I put my stats. So we're going to very quickly do that. Also since the last time I did level up my faith just a tiny little bit enough to equip the lowest tier of Hex so that's why I have Dark Orb equipped. But yeah let's quickly go into my player stats. That's how I've been doing my, my stats on the left there. I have horrible horrible poise, horrible defense. My agility is actually pretty good that means I've got quite a quick roll and also that it has lots of invincibility frames. My next goal stat wise is getting int to 40 so that's 7 more levels so that I can equip some of the, the harder hitting sorceries that I picked up from uh, oh, what was the NBC's name I'm blanking on it the one whose gear I'm now wearing strayed strafe something like that anyway so yeah that's it and I am below 30% weight so I should have a very quick roll and equipment wise oops, that's not the right one equipment my basic sorcerer staff is at plus 5 I'm using the fire longsword plus 4 that shield you buy from the merchant in town excuse me that is up to plus five the rings I'm wearing that gives me regen that gives me stamina regen that gives me 50 extra HP I think it's pretty useless that's going to be the ring that gets replaced first I think and then the covetous one plus one which I got from the merchant for spending a certain amount at her I just wear all the time because it gives you more souls from regular enemies and of course as I was saying I'm wearing the black set now I was saying last time that I would upgrade it I can't it needs Twinkling Titanite, which is exceptionally rare. Oh, and it was straight. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, Twinkling Titanite is exceptionally rare in this game. Even by the end of the game, there's no way to just farm it as far as I'm aware. You can buy some from her there at the end of the game. but Or maybe not quite the end of the game, but nearing the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you find it in some rare places. So there's not a lot to go around. So I'm really going to... If I'm going to invest in this armor in terms of upgrading... I have to go all in. I have to not use the Titan Eye on anything else. So I'm not sure I'm going to do that because I know there are other mage sets and I do want to try them. Oh, I do enjoy seeing a lot of summoning signs because I'm going to need help for this boss, I think. Also, yes, I killed those three damn crossbowmen to get rid of them. Massively, massively important. And as always, I'm going to explore the area a little bit first. I'm going to maybe give you some information about it, maybe pick up some items, show you what you have to do. And then I'm going to come back and find a summon. Now, I am only going to summon one. Because this is yet another boss fight where you can get Lucatil to help you, assuming you have been following her questline thus far. I have heard that you're supposed to keep her alive in most, if not all, of the fights where you get her, so I've not done that. So maybe after a point she'll just disappear. Yeah, that does about the same damage, maybe a tiny bit more than a basic soul arrow. Soul arrow. It seems to have a bit of knockback on it though, which is possibly different. In here there's three more of these irritating crossbowmen. Although thankfully, because I'm a mage, I can take one of them out like this. Oh no, that did a crit! Damn it, that was a waste. I am going to switch to my sword to get the other two because... Well, they've got their... Oh, sometimes they draw their swords really, really quick. But when they have their crossbow out, it's really easy to just wail away on them. So the way to the boss is just straight down there. And there's another summoning sign here. Lucatil's summoning sign is right at the bottom of this. Uh, keep in mind, you have to be human to see her. I am human, right? Yeah. So we'll just go down here and she should be there, assuming I've done everything right prior to now, to follow her storyline. Oh yeah, that's um, lacerating knives up there, they're not really worth rolling for. Uh, yeah, that's Lucatil's symbol right there. Yep. Not summoning her yet. And there's other summoning signs down here, good. So yeah, this area, you're up to waist deep water and that's the boss fall wall right down there at the end there. This area is a pain in the ass because of the water. You move slower in the water, you use up more endurance, you can't roll as effectively. I mean, look at my fight against the Flexile Sentry for proof of that. It's also full of exploding zombies and also big nasties that I think may be resistant to dark. So we're going to find out. Now there is one... Oh, there he is. The best way to fight these people as a melee... Car oh yeah, that did absolutely bugger all to him. Let's try a normal soul arrow. Oh crap, you're resistant against all magic. This just got really, really bad. Oh, I can't even do any damage with my fire sword. That is not good. I don't know how I'm going to kill this guy. I mean, a billion soul arrows later, maybe? It's easy to keep away from him if you're a mage, but I'm doing 54 damage. That is pathetic. Yeah, okay, well, 
you know, feel free to like skip forwards 10 minutes and maybe I'll have killed him by then. And just to reiterate how bad this is, there's about five of these guys in this area. Five. Maybe, well, maybe four. Either way, there's more than one and look how badly I'm handling one. I can't believe they're so resistant to magic. I mean, I figured they'd be resistant to dark. I went in knowing these guys look like they're corrupted. They'll be strong against hexes. But 54 damage, okay, a crit for 128, that's not too bad. Uh, they're actually doing slightly more than the homing soul arrows, although from what I've heard, homing soul arrows are pathetic. Also, thankfully their AI is pretty damn terrible and he just let me kite him around this small room. So, hmm. I'm not 100% sure I can get away with showing you guys everything that there is in this area. I can't handle these things. I'll run out of magic. That's a kick in the pants. I can't believe my sword was even doing crap damage. I mean, it does fire damage, sure, but it also does base physical. Yeah, there's another one on the right there. I mean, if I bring in another player, they'll possibly want to kill these guys. I really, really don't. Knowing now that I can't hurt them. What do we have here? Sublime Bone Dust. That improves the Estus to plus two. So that's actually a very worthwhile item getting. I'm going to have to clear this area out eventually. Um, I'm just debating how to handle this. If I run to the fog wall, I can kind of show you how to handle things. If I die, it's fine. I've got tons of humanity. Or I could summon someone and hope that they help me clear the area out. And also the boss, of course. Yeah, I could. I don't really want to... <sighs> hmm. I'm going to try. I'm going to run. This is the strategy for how you get back to the boss if you have died a billion times and are sick of clearing this area. You want to dual wield here and take out this guy for sure and then run up the ladder. I have, sorry, run up the stairs. Why? Because the cells down there are filled with exploding suiciding bastards and you don't want to aggro them when you're in the water because you can't evade them. It's much better to come up here. Now if you do some other stuff in the Bastille, you get the key for this door and the door across the way and it actually makes the boss fight that we're coming up on easier in the sense that it's brighter so there's no chance of you losing lock on and you'll understand what I mean once we get into the fight. Nothing in here eh? Well hang on a minute, let me check these walls. I just find it a bit suspicious is all. It is a cell I suppose. Nothing moved there. I find it hard to hear the sound sometimes. And can we just target him over there? Let's see how much Hex does against these guys. Or Dark Orb, I should say, which is a Hex. Does a fair amount against them. Fine. So if I was just bum-rushing the boss and say I had Lucateel with me, this is how I did it on my melee character, because this boss took me about three attempts. I would run up these stairs, I would kill that guy, then I would just roll into the gate down there. Now, I just realised the gate is actually closed when you first get here, and I can't remember how you open it. It must be a... oh, it's a switch right below me there. Am I invincible while pulling a switch? Oh, I hope so. It doesn't look like I've... Oh, I have. I've tr triggered them all. That's so bad. Run, just run. I'm going to have to go back, though, because I can't take this bot alone. Oh, or I could just summon uh, players, but I want Lucatiel to carry on her storyline. All right, we're just going to do it this way. I don't even need lock-on. Okay, apparently I do need lock-on, because otherwise the orb will just float above your face. By the way, I know I'm using up a lot of magic. I think magic is actually going to be utterly useless against this bot. Or you could just fall off the edge too. I am okay with you doing that. Oh. Yeah, as I was about to say, I think magic is going to be largely not great against this guy. I don't mean in the sense that he'll be resistant to it. I mean in the sense that he jumps around a lot. So soul arrows are probably just going to not track him. Radiant life gem. Fine. I'm just checking for items at this point. Yeah, if you've done some extra stuff in the Bastille and have a key, you can open these side doors and light up some stuff, light, light up that thing through there, you can just about see it with your torch, and it makes the boss room brighter, so that you can lock on easier, because as I say, he jumps around a lot, so it's hard to keep a lock on. I haven't done that stuff yet, and as I run back to get Lucateel, I'll go into reasons why. There's two covenants in the game, with two areas each, where... They work like the Forest Covenant in Dark Souls, meaning that, well, two of them do exactly, and they're called the Belfry Covenant or something similar to that. I'm just running here, so if there's still any of those undead that I just triggered, I'm in trouble. It should be fine. Uh, and I'm going to... Oh, that was so very close. I'm going to go back up the elevator, hoping that he will lose aggro if I do this, because I don't want him blocking the door. Yeah, as I was saying, there's a Belfry Covenant, and if you join it, you can safely traverse the area, but if you're not a member, you get invaded by people who are, and there's also an uh, optional boss. And if you do all that, in the Bastille anyway, you get 
access to an NPC invasion and then you get a key to do all the stuff I've been talking about. But the reason I don't want to do that is, is I, I'll get invaded constantly because I'm playing at prime time at the moment. Um, I'm going to give it a second here. So it's one of the areas of the game I want to clear when I'm in offline mode. Same with the other covenant I was mentioning, it's the Rat Covenant. They have two areas, however, they don't invade your game if you trespass their area. You get drawn into their game. And people have found that you can actually troll people with that if you raise the difficulty of your game using the Bonfire Asinix or whatever they're called. I really hope he's not there when I go back down here. Can I kind of see? I actually can. I can see through the floorboards. It looks safe. Right. Yeah, so the Rat Covenant people buff up the difficulty of the rat areas in their game to like new game plus 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 plus. So when people get drawn into their game, they get one shot no matter how good their gear is for the difficulty they're on. And I don't want any part of that. Plus, mostly they're optional stuff. You don't need the key and stuff I've been talking about here to uh, kill this boss. It just makes it a bit easier. So we are going to summon Lucatio. We're going to run to the wall, the fog wall, and we're going to summon a player. And then we're going to take on the last sinner. Lost sinner? Last sinner? It's one of the two. I've, it's been a while since I've fought this guy slash girl. I believe one of the bits of his equipment you get from... Oh, shit. Why are you there? Why are you right there? Lucatio will distract him for a second. I don't actually care if Lucatio gets damaged here. It's, I just want her to survive the fight against the boss. Because apparently that is how you forward her storyline. If she survives three of the four possible bosses you can summon her on. Now I didn't summon her on Flexile Sentry in the time I won. Because she glitched every single time and didn't come through the damn door. So I don't think it's possible for me to finish her storyline now. But I will try and show you as much of it as I can. And why are there no summon signs here anymore? Come on, there was tons! Well, there wasn't tons, there was a few. I mean, if I have to take it on with just Lucatio, I'll give it a go. Oh, there we go. Get out of my way, Lucatio. I want a melee person, please. You are a mage? Nope. You? I'd prefer some bro, to be honest. You are a melee guy. You'll do. So, yeah, as I was saying, one of, this, one of the gear you can make with the Sinner's Soul, I think, implies that it's a woman. But I'm not 100% sure on that. I will probably keep on saying he because it gives off a very he atmosphere. Although it reminds me a lot of, what was her name? Lisa from the Resident Evil remake on GameCube. You'll see what I mean. It's a very melee focused fight. As I say, the opponent moves around a hell of a lot. It's going to be murder trying to lock on because it's dark unless you do the side stuff involving the Bell Tower Covenant to light the place. Lucatio, if she is your only form of defense, will die in the first minute. She just can't do anything to him. Just gets hit. Praise the sun with me. Please. Please praise the sun. Please don't just immediately leave. Okay, you bowed. And we are going to get a cutscene as I go through here. You are following. Good, you're not going to leave. Wow, did you see my beautiful blue eyes there? Okay, here we go. I really hope the fight doesn't start without me because he won't need the cutscene, whereas I do. See, doesn't that look like a guy? But it is actually a girl. He even sounds like a guy. So, yeah, the great, the, the great, the sinner, the lost sinner or last sinner, I forget which, uses a kick-ass greatsword and jumps around in the dark because they extinguish all the flames. But you can put on flames that don't extinguish if you do the side stuff. Oh, he's coming right for me. And I'm, oh, yep, there it goes. I was going to say I'm very surprised that didn't take away all my stamina the second it did. See what I mean? Uh, I really should have maybe decided to do the, the side stuff because my lock-on distance, oh, the damage is okay. My lock-on distance is pathetic. I mean, in general, sorcery lock-on distance in this game is pretty damn bad. But I think if he's con... Oh, that missed? Yeah, I'm... Ugh. I need to be a bit braver. I need to stay closer. If I was doing this with just Lucatio, I would not rate my chances at all. Ow. Ow. Fast roll, on the other hand, is amazing. So this guy's attacks, basically just all greatsword swipes. He has a flying plunging attack that's probably his most damaging, I think. There goes Lucatio, so yeah, I'm definitely not going to get uh, her storyline at all. She just stood there, did you see that? She wasn't even trying to defend, she was sitting there. Right, I just need you to... Oh, you take a lot of damage. If he dies before I do a bit more damage, this is probably going to be a loss. There's the plunging attack. Oh, he followed up with us. I didn't actually know he did that. I hope you've got more Estus on you, because why haven't you healed? Oh, his back is his best place to attack. He does do swipes, as well as the various pokes. No, oh, why aren't you healing? Heal, man, heal! I'm not calling you to my side, you're not a dog. I mean... Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. 
Okay, now I need you to defend me or I'm going to die. Thank you. Oof, if he had changed his mind. Oh, this could be it. This could be it if he follows up. I am burning through Estes. The lock on distance. I can't overstate how pathetic it is for this fight. It's on purpose. It's part of the mechanics of the fight. He makes the room dark so that you can barely lock on. You can do a massive side track to stop him. Oh, all right. You got the kill, Barack 01. Or Burik. Burik. Thank you. Praise the sun with me, brother. Soul of the Lost Sinner. That, if I was doing it alone, or just with Lucatil, would have been a loss. A guaranteed loss, I would say. And I'd probably have to go do the... Yeah, I hate that uncomfortable bit where they stick around for longer now. That would have been murder. So I would have had to do it hand-to-hand, -hand, basically. Make the most of my super evasion. I mean, look, I can do a lot of rolls before I lose all my evasion. And I'm moving super fast. It's like double the speed of my melee guy's medium roll. So that was the first old one. I don't think I very... I did a good job representing that fight, to be honest. Meiji's playing offline, or that are just stuck with Lucatil, I don't know. You can't lock on to him. You just can't. You have to be at his back, so you have to rely on melee. Now, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. Let me just read this. Oh, I did it. Okay. I was, there's no warnings about mimics, but I'm not taking any chances here. Fair enough. So I'm going to pump all these 45,000 souls into Int. Another fragrant branch of your and Elizabeth Mushroom is like the best life gem. I don't think there's any enemies in this one. Yeah, it's fine. This is going to be all I did. Now the real fight begins. And then are you ready? Yeah, sure. Fighting work. So yes, we've defeated an old one and then we also get to light a primal bonfire. This will show up on the map back in the Medulla Mansion. And you can only go... You can't travel to this fire. You can only go from it. And that's what we're going to do, because I'm not going through that horrible area that I just had to suffer through. Yeah, so that was the first old one. I think I misrepresented that fight entirely, especially playing as a mage. But, you know, you can always... There is always that option of co-op. I find it very unlikely a lot of people will be playing in offline mode on purpose. But Although I do suggest doing that for the Belfry areas and for the Rat Covenant areas. I will point those out as I get to them. Although, as I say, I've already missed one, because there was one in the Bastille. I can't actually remember how you get to it. That's why I... It's through a, a locked door, and I can't remember which key is... Oh wait, no, I had a... Yeah, I forgot I didn't have a shard. I had a... Um, the thing that you burn in the bonfire. So yeah, can I get... How many levels can I get out of this? Four. Not too bad. And yep, I'm going to put them all into int. To be honest, I was expecting to die the first time I did the Lost Center. Whether it was with players or not, I was just expecting to die because I expected to be so fragile. Well, you saw, he almost killed me twice. Or three times. And I did have stuff planned to do while I was dead, believe it or not. Because there's some stuff I'm going to do that has a very high death rate anyway. If I'm already dead, there's no harm in risking it. Because I'm going to use a humanity, well, a human effigy afterwards. So yeah, we're doing stuff a bit faster than I planned. And I'm not dead yet, so you, you know what? I do have another plan. I want to go back to Harvest Valley, specifically the mines. And we're going to... F yeah, actually we are going to fight. I was going to... I stifled myself there because I, I didn't want to promise a boss fight, but we're only 18 minutes in here. Yeah, I think we might get to another boss fight straight away. Not Well, not straight away. You know what I mean. We're going to push on to another boss fight against two I call Jabba the Hutt, and I have seen people talking about him and referring to him as the same thing, so I'm glad everybody agrees with me regarding what this guy looks like. Oh, a sun bro. Hmm. Hmm. Do you want to fight through the area with me? I d I'm not a fan of bringing people in, but this is actually a very short area to the first boss, and it is a Sunbro, and I, f I feel a connection to Sunbros, especially when they're called Blondie and they're mages like I am. What armor is that you're wearing? Yeah, well, I'll bring a Sunbro in. I've already done a little bit of this area. You saw me doing the booby trap area. You saw me doing the bit to get to the Sunbro Covenant, which reminds me I do have a medal to hand in, but I don't think I need to do that right now. Oh yeah, that's what uh, the old one souls look like, by the way. They they are massive. Um, if the Sunbro leaves straight away, no harm. I'll just carry on going. There's no NPC to help you with this boss I'm going to head towards that I'm aware of. There's also no trick to it as far as I'm aware. I did it first try on my melee build. I couldn't honestly tell you. Summoning failed. Player was unable to join. Okay, I guess we're doing this solo. I'll come back when I get to the boss. Well, actually, I, hmm. no, I, can, I, I think I deserve some penance for the Lost Sinner being a bit too easy. So... 
I don't know why I've got homing soul arrows equipped. They're really honestly terrible. They do the damage of a regular soul, ar soul arrow, they just fire slower. I mean, that's not a good thing. Uh oh. I assume Dark does really crap against them. Uh, it, it does okay. I really shouldn't have let him get so close, although it does look like his hexes can't actually get me, as long as I keep on backing up every time. It's as I was saying, I will take on this boss solo because I think it will be a challenge as a mage because I'll take a lot more damage. And also it will make up for you know, taking it slightly too easy on the Lost Sinner. And it might also give me a chance and you a chance to learn what this boss can do because I honestly have no bloody idea. I just circled around him, every so often he kind of wagged his fat tail and then he was dead. Pyromancy, I remember being massively effective. I think I had Flame Swap by this point because I got it from Strayed, so it's a ridiculously overpowered spell. Put it that way. Now, let's get rid of some more of these homing arrows. I do not need them. I mean, look how slow they travel, and look at the damage they do. I mean, they're, um, I think those guys are strong against magic in general, but look at that. I mean, that is just embarrassing. Yeah, I want to get rid of that at the next given opportunity. Just hitting for 171 with the sword is pretty damn good. So I think I remember covering this before, but you have a upper left path and then a lower right path. I'm actually going to go in via the lower, and I think I need to use some soul arrows to break my way in. Or I could use the hexes, actually. There's a bunch of barrels covered in poison. I really wish... Yeah, he just poisoned himself. That is very, very common in this area, that the enemies who are not immune to poison end up poisoning themselves and getting themselves killed. Although the poison wore off pretty damn quick on that guy. So there's another one. Oh yes, I forgot you. I was going to say there's another one up on the corner. I actually forgot there was another one right behind the wall. And he is also poisoned, although it wore off instantly again. It's a bit weird. Maybe the th this is after the 1.03 patch landed, and I'm not entirely sure what that patch added. Did it change some stuff? Did they do it in secret, or is there a list? I'm going to have to look it up after I've recorded this. Because I could have sworn they usually poison themselves to the point they just die. So there is another guy up there for sure. Yep, there he is, right there. Now, will this travel up? It will. And he poisoned himself. And poison isn't damaging him. I swear poison damaged these guys last time I was here, so maybe that has changed. Oh, yeah, never mistime your short sword swing, because you'll get in a lot of trouble. I believe this area is fine. Yes, yeah, so this is Earthen Peak, and we don't have that far to go to get to the boss. Now, if I remember correctly, there's no ambushes here, but you will get poisoned while you run down there. Confidence required ahead. Now, am I equipped with the stuff that cures poison? Yes, I am. Poison moss. So, get on the poison moss. Uh, poison moss, poison moss. There we are. And we'll just take a running leap. Oh, oh crap, maybe there was an enemy in there. That's a flask shard, so that's massively important. What's in here? I don't actually remember what's in here. So we're going to stand up here and we're going to heal. It's more poison stuff! Yay! It's little beetle things. They don't really do much. They occasionally spray poison, they occasionally nip at you. You'd have to go out of your way to get hurt by them, to be honest. And fire is very effective against them. So I am quids in. Now what does this say? Hidden path up ahead. Really? It's not an illusionary... Oh, I bet if you put in the forest lockstone, it'll light it up. And I still don't have any more lockstone, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you guys what is in here. I don't remember, either. And I'm going to get poisoned again. Yay! By the way, there is a death drop in the poison. If you go slightly to the right there, that's a death drop, so don't go in there. And I'm just going to use another one of those. And I must remember I have that flask shard, because I do have a habit of forgetting. Alright, this area should be totally safe now that I got rid of that other guy. Yep. There's a slight booby trap on the left up here. There's one of those poison spitters that will start spitting as you get nearby. Like that. You can just wait. So there's a couple of those big... Oh, or you can accidentally still run through it like I just did like a moron. There's a couple of those mallet poison guys. Oh yeah, as if on cue. Oh, make that three of them. Oh, that is doing so bad damage. I don't want to waste my best spells because I do want to try and use them on the boss. Because I'm curious, how much hexes do I have left? Eight. Uh, they're all right. Yeah, they do. They actually do good damage. And unlike some of the higher power hexes that require souls, that one doesn't. It's just the basic one. I could probably hit him. 
Oh! So your hammer friend decided to... Okay. I don't know. Oops. Excuse my phone getting... That was emails. I can't help getting emails. I get a lot of emails. By the way, to get over to that area over there, and I think it's worthwhile, I can't remember, you have to take a dodgy flying leap type thing from here. Not a full leap though, because otherwise you'll do a forward roll and you'll go too far. Am I going to do that right now? Hell no! I'm going to attempt the boss first. If I die on the boss, then sure, I'll come back and try it all you want. And there is an item in here. Yes, there is. Skeptic Spice. Good, that's the one that lowers int requirement of a spell by one. Oh, and... I was wondering where the last hammer dude was. Now, what else have I got left? I've got crappy, heavy soul arrows. They do like 50 or 70 damage to him. Not enough, but where'd he go? There he is. I'm back to the normal crappy lock on range for sorceries. Yay! Oh, he's gonna get a swing in. Oh, not quite. Good. Right, and then we'll switch to great heavy. You have to kill the boss to get the bonfire, by the way. The first bonfire of Irvin Peak, I mean. Oh, there's a lot of Sunbros waiting inside this boss. I'm kind of tempted. I'm so tempted to summon a Sunbro. I don't think I need help for this boss, but if I summon a Sunbro, we get a Sun Meadow each. Remreek. That's a hell of a name you've got there, buddy. And you're wearing a hell of a costume, too. If that doesn't work, I could technically summon two Sunbros and we could have Team Sunbro, but that would be, honestly, it would be the definition of overkill. I'll wait and see if it fails. I think we only need the one. And if I... Oh, I'm running out of spells, mind you. Hmm. Also, don't try and cast spells with a sword. That's very stupid. Yeah, come play with me, Hammer Dude. And Poison Dude in front of him that I accidentally hit. I don't want to waste a great heavy. I'll use a great. Oh. Okay, that was a waste. Let's see if we can get an attack from this guy. I can't actually remember the guy's patterns. Oh, sorry, sorry, summon. Don't get killed, please, summon. There, sorry. No, yes, as as you were as you were saying. Also, apologies for the dog barking. I'm recording this during a time where the the stuff outside my house gets the road. That's the word, not stuff. The road outside my house gets very busy, and she disapproves of the cars. No, is this a mimic? It is not a mimic. I'm sorry, Sunbro. I know we can go for the boss. Oh, it's a trap. It still managed to hit me as well. The little shitty chest. <laughs> All that for a torch. I totally forgot that was a booby trap. Right, anyway. Sorry, Sunbro. Let's get on with this. Great heavy. Jabba the Hutt. Covetous demon. Yeah, you can call it whatever the hell you want. I'm calling it Jabba the Hutt. Also, I just said Jabba the Hutt rather than Jabba. 228 from a great heavy. Good. Um, I'm really curious about seeing this guy's attacks. Because I honestly don't have a fecking clue what he does. Okay, because he kind of claws. He does a tail swipe. I know that for sure. Because I kind of hung around. I strafed around him. So he kept on trying to swing with his tail. I mean, what did that do? <laughs> this is embarrassing as a boss, honestly. If it wasn't so early in the area, I would say it's a boss they didn't have time to finish. But I think it's maybe just going easy on you. I mean, he does a lot of damage if he catches you when you're not defending. But... There's these can I'll show you after the fight actually, because I don't want to risk dying and embarrassing myself. There's something to do with the roof that I'll show you in a second. And there we go. Easy sun medals. No wonder their sun bros are hanging out outside this boss, because it's so damn easy. What, no sun medal this time? Why not? Or was it a glitch that time I got it for the ruined sentinels? Bye bye, and I'm gonna uh, that looks like I'm trying to Solicit fellatio, let's not do that. Oh yeah, see we do both get a sunlight medal. That's why, yeah, so if you're a sunbro and you want to get easy medals, kill the covetous demon for people. Hilariously simple. Right, as I was saying, it feels like there's a trick to this fight that doesn't get used. You see these kind of green glowing barrel things? If you smash them, because I've done this on my other character using a bow, they are filled with poisonous hollows and they drop. So it feels like the covetous demon is supposed to do something and bring them down, but he doesn't. And I have no idea why. Also, this area seems entirely unused. Like, you see that staircase that goes, winds all around and up there? You can jump onto this part, but then you get stuck because there's an invisible wall and you can't do anything else. So, I don't know if there's something not working with this boss or if it's just something unfinished. Either way, there's a bonfire through here and we are at half an hour. I'm going to rest at it and then I'm going to go try and do that jump and probably die and embarrass myself because I feel like that might be a fitting end. Oh, 
Hang on a minute, Lucatio's here. I don't remember meeting Lucatio here. And she doesn't join you for this boss fight. Though, I mean the next one of the area. Okay, well, let's see what she has to say. I don't remember this at all. Still on the road, are you? Sorry to have burdened you so. This is for you. By way of an apology. Ring of Steel Protection plus one. Huh. I found my thoughts growing hazy. Oh, she's turning more hollow. My memories are fading. Oldest first. The curse is doing its work upon me. I am frightened. Terribly so. If everything should fade, what will be left of me? I had an older brother. We learned to fence together. He became the most decorated swordsman in all of Mira. I never even compared to him. In fact, I never beat him. Not once. But then, one day, he was gone. Lost without a trace. Now I'm certain that he was taken by the curse. If only someone would hear my tale. My brother must have come here, too. Soon I may forget even about him. That should have been I should... I may even forget about him, right? I don't know. Oh right, now you're repeating yourself. Yeah, so she is becoming more and more hollow, unfortunately, and she has distant memories of her brother she can barely now remember. It's a shame, her story is probably the saddest in the game. Right, uh, oh yeah, the Ring of Steel Protection plus one. What is that? Steel protection, steel protection, steel, where are you, where are you, there you are. Increases physical defense, by how much? Oh, it's actually quite a substantial buff. That is, what, it's like an extra 50, 60, 70, 70 something. Yeah, that's actually pretty damn nice. If I didn't care, actually I don't really need the coveted servant ring all the time. If I'm farming, definitely wear it. But the extra defense for a mage might be handy right now. It puts my weight exactly at 30%, so my rolls should not be changed as long as none of my other gear does. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. How does my weight change if I'm on my staff, though? What's my weight at now? Still 30, good. Okay, so we have a little bonfire. Um, now about this crappy jump back there. If I rest, I'm going to have to kill some of those hammer guys again, and I've got enough souls to level up instead. I might do that off camera, because I, I, it's a bad jump, put it that way. It's just a bad jump, and I'll probably screw up at least twice. So, I think, yeah, if people want to see me leveling up, I'm going to do that instead of watching, you know, or showing you, rather, me failing a jump a couple of times. If I do fail the jump and end up dying, don't worry, I'll just use an uh, effigy before the next part begins. So, and in the next part, unless I do a side one where I do a little bit of sun brewing, maybe I shouldn't call it that. Hmm. Well, a side venture where I earn some more sun medals, and that's actually something else I could do. I could run quickly to hand in my sun medal. Uh, but that would involve killing some enemies because they haven't Here despawned yet. To see luck. However, but either way, if I don't do that, we will be carrying on through this poisonous area. It's a... Uh, I would say it's a middle of the road area. It's annoying because it's got some tough enemies and it has poison, but it's manageable. I wouldn't say it's a bad area. There's definitely areas which I found tougher. There's also a rather important NPC to find if you want to get the easy way of... Well, hang on. I can show you if I finish talking to her. And because I still have eight grand souls left, I'm probably going to go try and upgrade some equipment as well. Uh, yeah, there's an important NPC to find in Earthen Peak that will help you get down this hole in the village much easier. Although, for the record, prior to now, if I'd wanted to, if I had about 20 grand in souls, I could have bought the ring from the cat in here that would let me survive the falls, and that is perfectly possible. So if you wanted to go down there earlier, by all means do it. Look, this is the funniest place that she can spawn. She's sitting in a chair. That's a cat sitting in a chair. And also, I kind of accidentally remembered while I was talking through this, she gives a little bit of interesting backstory about the... What is this in the floor? Is that a potty? Is this where you shit? Ugh, and I'm standing on it. Oh well, I suppose I might as well just, while I talk, you know, kill two birds, etc. Yeah, if you talk to her, she usually tells you about stuff you are doing or stuff you've done. I think she has a bit of interesting lore about the lost sinner, so I'm going to try and make her say it. Oh. Who are you again? 
<laughs> oh, I'm not serious. You do have a rather pleasant scent. I just took a crab. That can't possibly be true. I'm quite fond of. <laughs> well, unless you like. Well, okay, yeah, you're a, you are an animal. Are you going to see the old ones? Those four who have grown so incredibly ancient. They must have sprouted quite a thick coat of moss by now. For heaven's sake, no one even knows their names anymore. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, nothing like yourself. For you have a most pleasant scent that grows nicer with each passing day. <laughs> that is not the dialogue I wanted. Let's try again. Have you made friends with the man by the sea? He has lost everything. Absolutely everything. <laughs> the only thing he's good for now is a few tidbits on covenants. Covenants are a type of, well, contract, you might say. You give something to gain... Yes, okay, we know what covenants are. I'm going to fast forward because I want her to talk about the Lost Sinner. Did you see that oddly formed oh. long ago? If you... or the... She does give you general information about the game as well, it's worth pointing out. This place is already dead. Everything will crumble, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. This place is fat. No, it isn't. Only the it's an... Are you going to see the old Oh damn it, maybe she doesn't say it yet. I'll try one more time. And then I'll just kind of pass it on roughly from memory. Have you made friends with Ah, okay. Shall acquire you're useless at this point. Yeah, if you talk to her about the lost sinner later, she says that um she slash he was imprisoned, and that's why she was in a straight jacket and shackles, for attempting to light the first flame. So I'm not sure what that means in terms of the Dark Souls lore, but I thought it was incredibly interesting, because didn't your character in Dark Souls aim to do that? I don't know. Anyway, that is going to conclude this part of my Dark Souls 2 playthrough. Thank you, as always, for the continued support. I am blown away that it is so popular, especially given how many other people are covering the game, I imagine. We are going to continue as a mage. I should probably have my staff out when I say that, you know, to try and be a little bit authentic. And we are going to go through Earthen Peak next time, or we're going to do some jolly cooperation as a little bit of a side venture. I'm not sure yet. But, you know, that's the general plan, and pushing on from there to our next confrontation with an old one. So thank you for watching, and ta-ta for now.